Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Steph. If you're new here, I'm Steph. So today we are in front of my atrocious bookshelves because the thing about me is I can't let go of books very easily. Like I easily let them go when I've read them and I know that I won't reread them. But if I haven't given a book a fair shot, then I won't let books go, which is why there's so many books on these shelves because I've had so many of these books for years, years. During some of my moves, I've been a little bit better about getting rid of books, but I am in a spring, not spring, I guess summer, transitioning to fall, cleaning mood. I've been cleaning out clothes because you know, the pandemic caused me to gain weight and I was holding on to clothes that I shouldn't be. So I started getting rid of them today or putting them in a donation pile. And so today I was like, let's just unhaul some books. I've been looking specifically at this shelf and I've been like, I need to get rid of some of these books because I just know in my heart of hearts that I'm not gonna read them. I am not necessarily breaking up with YA, but I'm also breaking up with YA a little bit. So I'm gonna spend a little more time focusing on this bookshelf for the unhaul. But there is a stack that's like sitting over here that I don't think you can see very well that has books that I've been planning on unhauling for a while so those are gonna go and then there is a small stack that you can't see sitting over here that are books that were sitting downstairs because i do have like a couple piles of books downstairs and a book cart that have a bunch of books in them and so i kind of went through that and pulled some books out that i thought i probably won't be reading there is also a collection of books here let's see if i can and my fan <laughs> So there is a collection of books here that are all read, as well as that bookshelf that is all read books. Um, those are all my read books. So that being said, I'm gonna take you along on my unhaul process. I'll just fast forward through lulls and stuff. And like, once I get a, a little pile, I'll take you through it and then so on and so forth. I don't know how this is gonna work out, but I thought it would be fun for you to do it with me. Maybe, I don't really know. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so for the first section, I went through these three shelves, which are my YA shelves. They're the ones that I was like the most uh, willing to get rid of things. Um, I do have a pile of uncertain books, which I think that I will do like try a chapter of these. That might be a completely separate video, but these are ones that I'm unsure about. So I have The Beautifuls by Renee Atier. I like Renee Atier, but I have heard like I don't know, mixed reviews about this. I have tried to read this. I think I got to 100 pages and I wasn't like super invested in it. This is an arc that I got from Comic-Con. Um, so I'm willing to unhaul this and like if I get the urge to read it, get it from the library um, just so that it's not taking up shelf space because it's not something I'm really prioritizing and it is something that I have tried. I also have the Boneless Mercies. The thing is, is I've had this on my shelf since it came out, which I think was like 2017 or something like that. Um, I'm very intrigued by this, but I do really like Viking inspired things. So that's why I'm also hesitant to get rid of this. And I was reading the synopsis and I still kind of am intrigued by this. So this is a, I'll probably end up keeping it. <laughs> um, one that I just don't know because I don't know if Dark Academia is for me first off. And secondly, I'm just not like as in love with YA contemporaries or like horrors or mysteries as I used to be. And that's a lesson in vengeance. Um, I really wanted to support this author, which is why I got this book. Um, so I think I'll still give it a chance, but it's going to probably remain on the possibly gonna unhaul. This one I've just completely lost interest in and I did try to read it a bit ago. I don't remember how long ago I tried to read this and I didn't get into it and that's Girl Serpent Thorn. Um, I also tried to read her other book, which I think is, it's Girls Made of Snow and Glass. The thing is I don't really like retellings very much. I never have even at the height of retellings being very popular in YA especially. I don't love 
retellings. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a retelling. I can't remember which retelling it is. Her other book was um, a Snow White retelling, but the thing is what keeps me interested is all of her books are queer. So I, I'm gonna try the first chapter again. And then the last one on the maybe pile is Descendant of the Crane. This is on the maybe pile because I read Joan He's other book, The Ones We're Meant to Find, and I just didn't like it. I didn't really vibe with it. I bought this when it first came out and read a bit of it. I wish I still had a bookmark in here. I don't know how far I got. I was slightly just like bored. I wasn't captivated with it. Um, and now reading the ones we're meant to find, I just don't know if Joan He is the author for me, but I'm willing to try this again and read a few chapters to see how I truly feel about it. The books that are on my for sure, I am getting rid of them is My Lady Jane. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about Jane Austen retellings. Um, this is supposed to be funny, like classic Jane Austen e type of book. It's set in that era. I I just don't care. This one I really did and maybe should put in my I'm gonna try another chapter of it, but it is The Witch of Stephen Gold because I have read like 20% of this and I didn't know what was going on. I didn't enjoy the writing style and I wasn't connected to any of the characters. I have seen many, many people DNF this or just completely not like this book, which makes me very sad because it was one of my most highly anticipated releases of, I think this was 2020. Um, maybe it was last year, but either way, I had pre-ordered it. I was very excited about it and I just could not get into this book. So I think I just need to unhaul it because I don't think it's going to be a book for me. Um, which makes me very, very sad. I think if you saw my last video, this deserves no explanation, but Kill Creek, I got another copy of a book that I don't want to read. <laughs> It's just a second coffee. The next book is Witchwood by Tahita Mafi. Um, I have kind of given up on Tahita Mafi. After I read the entirety of the Shatter Me world, like everything in the first two trilogies and the novellas, I just don't think that she is for me anymore. Um, I love her writing, it's so poetic, but I just don't, I don't have interest in her anymore, her work anymore. Uh, maybe if she wrote an adult novel, I actually would be super interested in that. But as for anything like YA or middle grade, I don't know that I have any interest. Also, I have nieces, so I'm going to be giving this to my nieces. I then have The Extraordinaries by TJ Klune. I just, I don't have interest really in this author or this book. These next two are a series and this is another author that I only liked one book of hers that I've read and every other book that I've read of hers I just don't like. Um, and that's And I Darken and Now I Rise by Kirsten White. I just have lost a lot of interest in her as an author as well. Um, and I got these I think when Now I Rise just was published, so that was like back in 2016 or 17. This is a retelling of Vlad the Impaler, if Vlad the Impaler was a woman. Um, that's kind of what Kirsten White does. And I've read like four of her books and I just, I don't think she's the writer for me. And lastly, we have Warrior of the Wilds. This is another author. I've read like three or four of their books and they are just not the author for me. Um, I ended up with this one because I went to Y'all West and it had just come out and I think I won it or something like that. And I've on average given all of her books two or three stars. So I just don't want to waste my time. <laughs> Let's move into the adult sci-fi and fantasy section, which will probably not have a lot of unhauling happening here, but we will try. <laughs> Like I said, this section I didn't think would have a lot of things unhauled from it. I'm only unhauling two books. The first one is American War and that's simply because my partner has another copy and I like the cover of it more and we don't need two copies. The second book is an ARC uh, that I got from the library. If you don't know, I'm a librarian so I do get ARCs. Um, I got Once Upon a River. I got this ARC a long time ago. I definitely thought that this book was something else um, and then I read to chapter 11, uh, 114 pages. And at the time of reading it, it just wasn't for me and I've never wanted to come back to it. So 
that is, I'm getting rid of that. I'd also like to just add in here since we're in the adult fantasy section, um, I am also unhauling this paperback copy of City of Brass because I did end up getting the hardcover of City of Brass. So I'm gonna donate this one, which made me remember that I actually had four YA books here that I'm unhauling that are from downstairs. Um, so basically it's everything from Adrienne Young. Um, these two, the reason I have two is because I went to an author signing um, and you had to buy a book to get your book signed. So I ended up getting two books and I was gonna give away one of these books like years ago and it just never happens. Um, I think Fable came in a book box, like the one and only book box that I ever got for myself and I just know that I won't ever read it because I have read Sky in the Deep and I enjoyed it at the time of reading it, but I then read The Girl the Sea Gave Back and I just didn't like this book. I got this as an arc at Y'all West and I did not enjoy this. But I will say that Sky in the Deep was a fun book. I really enjoyed that book a lot. It's a standalone as well. Like all of her books are in the same world, technically. Um, and it is Viking inspired. Um, but Sky in the Deep to me so far is her strongest book. So I just, uh, I don't think I need to keep any of these because I won't reread Sky and the Deep. So again, these will probably go to my nieces because they are YA. Okay, so we're gonna move to the top. We're gonna move to horror and it's like literary fiction, I guess. <laughs> So I went through my horror and literary fiction section. I have quite a few books. Um, these ones are a mix between, I just know that I'll never get to them because they are genres that I don't really like. Um, and secondly, uh, I have doubles. So the first one is actually a double. So I have a second copy of my Best Friend's Exorcism. My partner has a copy of it. So I don't really need a copy of it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna show the next two together because the reason I'm getting rid of them is very similar. Um, and that is The Illuminaries, The Illuminaries, and The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. These are historical fiction. I don't know why I have them. I think this was gifted to me, and I think that I found this at a bookstore thinking it would be something that it wasn't. I found it at a bookstore around the time that I had watched the show that is about the book Jonathan Strange and Dr. Norrell, Mr. Norrell. I don't know. Uh, I watched that show and I was like really into this idea of historical fiction and witches. I've come to find that that doesn't necessarily do anything for me as a reader. Um, we can all agree with that uh, based on my review of Once and Future Witches. Actually reading Once and Future Witches is kind of what made me realize that this book probably wouldn't be for me and I would rather it have a fair shot by somebody who really loves historical fiction. Um, and The Great Alone. Like, I have no interest in Chris and Hannah. Why do I have this? I'm pretty sure it was a gift. Um, I think it was a gift to me for one of my birthdays before my family ever really asked me what I wanted um, because I do know that my aunt really does love historical fiction. So I have a feeling that this was a gift um, and I just don't have any interest in you. I really, really wish that I loved historical fiction more because there are certain books that sound so good to me. And sometimes you just want like a real tearjerker. Um, and I feel like that's what Kristen Hanna does, but yeah. Um, and then these next four, they're all for the same reason, all same author, all same series. Um, and it is. The Mr. Mercedes series by Stephen King, I just, I'm not gonna read it. I've lost a lot of interest in Stephen King over the years. Um, there's maybe like two books at this point that I'm even willing to give a try, uh, but yeah, so. Um, and then I don't know how this got in the literary fiction section of my bookshelf. Maybe I just mistaked it for something else, but this is actually a YA. This is the second one in the Gilded Wolves trilogy by Roshani Chachki. Um, I won this in a Goodreads giveaway. It was the one and only time that I won a Goodreads giveaway. I tried to read this and realized that I remembered absolutely nothing about the Gilded Wolves and that I had no desire to reread it. So therefore, I don't have any desire to really move on with the series at this point anymore. 
I would rather somebody else have this that really wants to read it. I don't know if my niece read the first one. I think I gave it to her. So I will give this to her too. <laughs> and then I have One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I read half of this. You may be able to see. I read half of this and I wasn't liking it. And I was like, oh, maybe it's me. I just don't like Casey McQuiston. I've read another Casey McQuiston book since and I didn't like that one. So I now know that Casey McQuiston is not an author for me. The last three in this pile, again, are all duplicates. So it's uh, Good Omens, have a second copy. My partner has a second copy. We Sold Our Souls, my partner has a second copy. And A Gentleman in Moscow, my partner has a second copy. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pull off the books from this pile that I'm getting rid of. They've been in this pile for a while. Okay, so this unhaul pile has been sitting here for a while because some of them I've been like, oh, maybe I'm gonna go back to them, but I'm not. So there is A Crown of Wishes. I read the first one in this series and I gave it three stars. I have no desire to move on with the series. We then have Priory of the Orange Tree. We all know why right? If you've been around here for a little while, you will know that I tried to read this. I DNF'd it. I thought maybe I would come back to it, but I just don't want to. Even though that new announcement for the prequel book looks so good, I just, I don't think I want it. I can't, I can't force myself through something just because a cover is really pretty. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I don't think this is it for me. I also have things have gotten weird since we last spoke. I didn't like this. I just didn't. I don't even know how to explain it. It's not the horror for me. I'm so happy for everybody who just like thought this was so weird and gross and like the best thing they've ever read, but it just made me sick to my stomach. Not that I'm giving up on Adam LaRocca, but like, and then we have What Should Be Wild. So this started out as a very promising read and then I got halfway through and didn't care about any of the characters, didn't care about anything that was happening. But the beginning is really compelling. Um, I just don't foresee myself ever trying to give this book another shot. So we're gonna get rid of it. This next book is The Language of Dying by Sarah Pinborough. I hated this book. <laughs> If I could give it no stars, I would. I just did not like this book, which is hilarious because I think it has pretty rare reviews on Goodreads. If I'm correct, it has like a four stars, a three or four stars on Goodreads, which is pretty high for Goodreads. I just didn't have that same experience at all. And then these next four books literally have all of the same reasons behind them. Um, a shadow bright and burning i tried this out a long time ago couldn't get into it and from what i know this author is like weird i i have no idea but i don't i don't have any interest with this and now that i'm like kind of breaking up with ya a little bit feels appropriate the merciful crow i got like a quarter maybe halfway through this i am not interested in it i've also read the Thieves, Three Little Thieves. I've also read Little Thieves by Margaret Rogerson. Is that her name? Owens. See, I can't even remember the author's name. This is embarrassing. Margaret Owens. <laughs> um, I've read Little Thieves by Margaret Owens. I gave it like a 3.5 stars. I just, I don't think this is the author for me. I'm gonna keep saying that, but like that's the only way I learn which authors I like and don't like. And then we have Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Um, I don't like superhero things just generally. Like I'm not a Marvel fan. I don't like DC. I don't wanna watch Avengers. I'm not connected to any of those things. Like Black Panther and Spider-Man have been like the closest I've come to becoming a superhero girly. Um, it's just not for me. And so this in particular doesn't really work for me. I've tried reading Renegades. I cannot get into it. That's not to say that I don't like Marissa Meyer. The thing with Marissa Meyer is I've never tried anything else and I've never been interested in her other series. I don't know what that series is actually called, but it's like Cinder and Scarlet. It's all retellings and I, I can't do it. I don't think I'm gonna like it. I just don't love retellings. So this was like Marissa Meyer's best shot with me because I think literally every book except maybe her newest stuff is retellings. So, well, I think those are all of the books that I'm gonna get rid of today since I've looked on these two shelves and I already had my little pile of books. I think this is all I'm gonna get rid of today. Um, I just really wanted to go through this bookshelf and thank you so much for sticking with me if you went through this unhaul with me. I'm gonna count right now how many books that I'm getting rid of. So it is a total of 36 books. And the one thing that shocked me so far with this unhaul is that actually a good portion of these I did try to read and I didn't realize that I tried to 
read them <laughs> when I was unhauling them. And the other ones that I'm getting rid of that I haven't read yet, I either am getting rid of them because they're duplicates or because I'm not gonna be moving on with the series. Um, I have said this many times before um, when I first started Bookstagram because I did Bookstagram before I did YouTube. I really, really was bad at buying series as like a whole rather than just reading the first one and then deciding to move on <laughs> with the series. Um, I've gotten a lot better at that. For the most part, there are certain series that I'm like convinced I'm gonna love, so I have the whole series, but otherwise, I've been so much better about not buying full series just because a lot of those full series that I bought, I did not end up moving on with them. So I have learned my lesson with that. <laughs> and uh, this year specifically, especially because I've been reading my own TBR, I have been trying to only buy books that I've been anticipating or that I absolutely like think I'm going to love and read pretty soon. Anyway, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you unhaul books regularly or if you have like rules to unhauling books. I would love to know and I will talk to you next time. Bye!